My Hero Academia, Season 7, Episode 12. I'm not going fast enough. I have to get to UA before it's too late. Midoriya. Take your time, Deku. Wielder. Yeah? I have a bad feeling I just can't shake. I got a bad feeling I just can't shake. About Bakugo. You got a big storm coming, Deku. Let's see how you feel about not killing Shigaraki now. I mean, I guess in a way it would serve to give more credit to his decision. Even in shows, I catch myself not hating villains, starting to like them because the people they kill, those people over there that we didn't get to know and love. I'm not going to cry over NPCs. Bakugo is a different story. Now, for real, it's it's tears. Four to zero and no injuries. Understand? That's that was such a great moment. With actual strength competes. Please. Oh, no, no, no. We can at least protect everyone until Midoriya gets here. So uh. put a smile on your face. Damn it. Oh. How could you do such a thing? How could you? How could you? you, how could you? Yeah. You shouldn't have left this to your students. It's your fault, Eraser. Oh, this is... This actually hurts. That is... Devastating. A lot of times when I hear Shigaraki taunt, it kind of rings hollow. It just sounds like an angsty teen. This is not one of those moments. That cuts. And they will take it as their fault. All of them. <laughs> yeah, it could get worse too. It could get worse. And since then, your numbers have dwindled. Okay, does this In mean fact, hope? Is there hope? situations become so dire that you've put a bunch of children on the front line. <laughs> it's only that also is true. That Damn. Die. Sure, guys, hits her landing today. I'm actually grateful that I got to fight you first. Get out of here, Shoto! <laughs> what? 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 Right before you iced me, I took a no. chance to try to copy your big move. I thought it was over. Where is he? Stop <laughs> I guess it's gonna come down to that. I guess it has to come down to that. Someone who's equally obsessed. This is not going well. Remember the school festival? Remember that? Those were some good times. Do do do. What happened? Where did it all go so wrong? Dabi does look. Awesome, though. I simply need to support Shigaraki. Then, in the wake of this chaos, an equal world will be born. Right, Shigaraki needs a lot of support. He's on his back leg right now. Worth. No more villains. Only boundless freedom will reign. Right. I think we've been down this road before. It's weird. It's as if hero society emerged from a vacuum. Like, there isn't freedom already. Also, ignoring the idea that trying to make things equal, assuming that's actually a goal of value, has a way of making things less equal and less meritocratic. Gee, if only there was any precedent for this idea. Like, you know, a time where quirks emerged before there were rules for quirks. Here's a quick prediction of how that goes. The people with the confluence of the least scruples and the most power battle it out for supremacy with massive collateral damage, creating a cycle of violence and a race at the bottom until enough people get fed up with it that they band together and cross that point of critical mass where they gain the upper hand and are able to clamp down on that behavior, turn the spiral around, and then have a collective agreement like, yeah, let's not do that again. And so they create rules and people who enforce the rules, which creates people who are bitter that they can't do what they want in spite of the rules because the rules can't cover every possible case. And there is inevitably some non-optimal element of the rules, etc., etc. Hey, we're getting a bunch of system errors. I think someone's trying to hack the okay, let's just lose everything. Let's just hit bottom and start again. After the revolution, vestiges of the old This is the counter to like the business kids taking videos, but like terrible. Heroes are the only one with the relevant supporting cast. Everyone can be a villain in their own way. You too can be a villain. No, no villain is insignificant. Their ilk are not needed in the new world that we are building. You too can be free. Come here and embrace your freedom. The pests. Bakugo too. There's no way they'll lose. I love you kids, but... Heroes should be the ones that defend, after all. Villains are the ones who violate. That's true. We must true. push forward toward our dreams. With Villains no have remorse. way more limitations. What happened? He just totally... What? I don't like that he's handsome. Those who defend, those who violate. I've been saying this forever in every hero show I've ever watched. The greater burden is always on the heroes. Destroying is really easy. Building or even just maintaining is really difficult. You can make a spiritual parallel for that too. It's really easy to convince yourself that life is terrible and there's no meaning and there's no hope, that you're terrible, that Kingdom Hearts is dark because there too there's no responsibility. And even though it's effortful, it is kind of the path of least resistance. You're not on the hook for anything. I think that's why typically when I see those arguments, you can tell it's not totally what people have arrived at from just pure reasoning because there is very strong emotion associated with that belief. People will fight really hard to defend that belief, which is weird when you think about it, because why are you spending so much energy to defend things that are clearly worse for you? There almost has to be some sort of hidden benefit there, some need it fulfills. And often I think it's something like to avoid having to face the blinding pain of the light, which suddenly would like burn into your brain with all the things that you must do to complete your destiny. Things that deep down we really would like, but are terrified to try because we sort of know what it will take and that it will require basically purging ourselves and purifying fire. And 
may very well have ancestrally meant death because to do so also puts you in the path of the hero where you're facing off against villains, let's call them, who face no such restrictions or obligations. Say what you want about All for One, he's a thinker. Now he's smart and handsome. Turns out the original substance was derived from someone's quirk. Don't you think that's fascinating? All right, what else can go wrong? Uh, let's just come on. Let's get it over with. What else you got? I may be sentimental for a moment. Your voice, your eyes, and your smile. They bring so much joy let's to my Let's get a little heart. creepy. Hang up, hang up. Delete. He's becoming younger. His body, it's in perfect condition. Thanks a lot, Endeavor. Wow, he has Aries quirk. Maybe Ari can say Bakugo? I don't know. I'm looking for something here. Give me something. He looks... Great, he looks so happy. I passed the baton to Tomuro Shigaraki, so my dream will live on. And I mean he's I still in there, he's a backup brain. Duty. I must rescue him from that trap you set. A bold move, but useless in the end. Now, if you will excuse me. His face is tripping me out. More than his eyeless face, amazingly. The one with no features, like the whole worm thing. That was somehow less unsettling. I don't like all for one having a face. <laughs> and I don't like that he's good looking. The sickly nature of him also, I don't know. It was comforting, in a way, I guess, in hindsight. Suicidal power-up proves he's desperate. Endeavor just needs one more solid shot. I don't know if you're gonna one-shot him at this point. I got the inspiration from comic books. It's also so cool that he's on fire. The big bad villain is always feared by people around the world. Why do you think that is? Because what they do is evil? And what counts as evil? I can take a shot of this. I don't know what he's going to say, but I have an idea of what actual objective evil is. And it plays into the very idea that he brought up earlier. And to the fact that destruction is easy, creation is hard. Yet, if you look at existence and life, we are creatures that exist and grow in spite of that fact. Against all odds, all of this work, all of this effort, all of these collective pieces doing their best to come together and synthesize something greater than themselves, like the cast of the heroes, where every part plays a role and their combination is more powerful than any one of them ever could have been. Given all the beauty and the miraculousness of what's contained in that, and all the people who care about it and fight for it, to enter that world and knowingly destroy it for no reason and no gain, except one's selfish desires. This maybe sounds ridiculous and just way out there, but to undo the very work of the universe itself, can you think of anything that could possibly be considered objectively more evil than that? And I think we all sort of intuitively get this. For example, there's a difference between sadness and tragedy. Sadness is when there's loss, but loss is inevitable. And for that matter, destruction isn't always bad. Tragedy is when there was needless loss, when something truly special and great, for example, someone's life potential, was lost through some freak accident or something needless, or because someone's anger or emotion got the best of them in one terrible moment. To knowingly do those things, to knowingly cause that destruction, to knowingly cause pain, to knowingly do damage, that I think is at the heart of evil. I know that eating animals can be a controversial issue, just generally, one way or the other, but even to take that as a given, there's a very big difference in conception between killing an animal for food and killing an animal for pleasure. No matter your stances on eating meat, that is clear for that very reason. As another example, you can look at the show and the heroes are those that are working really hard to defend the integrity of potential and hopes and dreams and growth and building value of human life. And the villains are those that would take that away because of their own weakness, their bitterness, their anger. You could even see this in the gray, right? Like watching the show, we're more okay with some villains than others. And the key distinction is something like how much they themselves can make a coherent argument for why their destruction serves some good, serves something constructive. Things like love of their friends and addressing ills in society, carving out a place for themselves, fighting against societal tyranny, which does contain a destructive risk. The truly detestable villains are the ones who have no such rationale, have no constructive aim, just simply want to reduce the world to rubble because they're angry. The death of a dream. Having the future you always envisioned snatched away from you. There's some so potential in there. Do. Take away the future of everyone in this world. That's all oh, I've that's ever all? wished for. Yeah, speaking of detestable. Why though? Why? This is the moment to strike. Hasn't America suffered enough? It's over. He can do almost anything. This is very un-American. Developed nations are already putting together plans to gain Tomorrow's trust. It's going to turn Oh, into you cowards. Place. You cowards. You'll have a heel firmly planted on all of our necks. Our future must be protected, Tim. I'm trying okay, to tell all right. you that we won't have a future. Okay, I'll try to give this guy the benefit of the doubt. He's scared. And I would be scared too. Everyone's scared. It's an impossible enemy. And you can form a plausible story in your head that the justification for your capitulation is future success. And there are even cases where that's valid. I think the important thing to take a page out of Hunter Hunter's book is it depends on what is actually underlying that decision. Is it an excuse or is it actually tactical? Is it your body fleeing or is it your spirit? To that old saying, you can lose a battle and win a war. That's not what this feels like though. What was Star fighting for in that battle? Why do you think Cassie died following in her master's footsteps? Oh, that's so cute and tragic. Children watch adults. They learn from them as they grow. Adults support those children and pass on their lessons. 
Until one day, the children can do the same. And maybe better, hopefully better. Standing on their shoulders. Oh god, cutting to best genius over Bakugo's corpse is just brutal in that analogy. I am the ninja hero. That includes the human body. I have plenty of experience in that regard. Bakugo's fine. Bakugo's fine. He's fine. Bakugo's fine. Never abandon hope. There is a whole hole in his chest. I will not accept defeat. It just feels so qualitatively different. There's no coming back from that. Perhaps not. I'll leave the rest. It doesn't matter. Oh, he's sacrificing himself. If I must, I will become this child's heart. It's the total opposite. I mean, Edshot, you know, like a hero that has been around forever, but has not really gotten that much spotlight. Hasn't really had that much glamor. Being the exact opposite in my analysis of what I just described about what evil is and what all for one is. I mean, if you think about it, in essence, what that is, is one for all. This theme, at least in my interpretation, being explicit in the show from the beginning. Piggybacking on that, I've been thinking a lot about, for a very long time, I, I think I was confusing heroism for glamor. And more generally, the reward for greatness for the greatness itself. This has come up for me recently in this long debate that I'm having with a friend. People who have what is important often receive rewards and then people see the rewards and point to those rewards as the goal. If it's working correctly, if it's going the way you want it to, if those things will even mean anything to you, it's because those things have stemmed from something way more important and there's a confusion of source and signal of the tree and its branches. And I think once you start brushing up against the edges of whatever that thing is, it changes your value system and you start to realize the things that you thought were important are really not that important, probably wouldn't give you what you're looking for, even though it was a great place to start because it got you on the path. And then ironically, probably gives you the best chance of receiving those things anyway. This season really driving home the no extras thing. Like imagine just being so unquestioning in the idea that your life's purpose, the best thing you could do would be to save Bakugo, a child. <laughs> She's such a beast, it's crazy. You want me to kill you that badly? No. That's not what she's thinking about, though. Whoa. Whoa! Did just sacrifice her arm? Good lord. I think one of the most fun things about this show is finding out who's who. Speaking of the school festival in Durutu, there was a long period of time where we thought things were bad, but they were not bad in hindsight. We didn't know how bad it would get. We didn't know what we had. We took it for granted. I took it for granted. I was fooled by the show's charm. Everybody was a hero when heroes were on top. Some of the people that are still here, still fighting in the worst possible scenario, I don't think I would have guessed. It's awe-inspiring. Maybe all their attacks are starting to accumulate, adding up bit by bit. It hasn't been that much. Heavy symbolism there. There's also the human inside Shigaraki. Was it because I actually felt threatened? Me? Afraid of some background extra? See, he has it wrong. All wrong. I mean, to be honest, the most devastating attack Shigaraki's taken so far was Mirio asking him if he's lonely. See, I told you Mirio's the ultimate hero. I got all these comments last episode about how Mirio can't do any damage. Well, you may be technically correct. Physically. Mirio will have the last laugh. <sighs> yes! <laughs> You don't gotta punch hard to be the ultimate hero. When I leave this world, it'll be with no regrets! <laughs> <laughs> with her- wow. Luna! It's unbelievable. Shocking. And amazing. It's catching up to no one reached their hand out to me. No one cared. No one would even look at me whenever I needed them! And yeah, look at what they're doing for Bakugo. It kept his foes at bay and overwhelmed oh, the world oh, around Oh no, it. that's gonna be his family? His hands shall become his family's faces? <laughs> no limbs left. Mirko! <laughs> what did he ever do to you? He's just standing there. He wasn't even attacking, he was just looking. Stop it! No, 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 no. No, no. You're nothing. Not worth my time. Why does everyone hate on Mirio? <laughs> Why is everyone so hard on Mirio, damn it? But Mirio wouldn't let it get to him, so neither will I. <laughs> Mirio number one, now and forever. Am I really that useless when there's no one to back me up? No, don't go down that road. No, I not you, no. Anything. It's temporary. There he is. There he was. This is all wrong. He said. This is You'll this okay. this hurts me so bad to see Miro breaking. Use it! I'm nothing to him! He won't even look at me! But I need you to get this. his attention! Even just for one second! Somehow! What do I have? What can I do? 
There he is. He's back. Ask him if he's lonely again. Hit him with psychological damage. Ask him to name one of his friends that isn't his dog. Without joy and laughter to balance the sorrow, this world cannot hope to have a bright future. Hey, you! Brought a peach for ya! <laughs> <laughs> Not what I was expecting. At least he has clothes on. Oh, thank God. Woo! <laughs> 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 Everything's fine. Everything's all right. I never doubted for a second. Did Mario just save the world with his ass? Told you he's number one. <laughs> number one hero, number one ass. He was made for this moment. <laughs> from the beginning. It's been there from the beginning. Speaking of things that have been under our nose the whole time. Mirio's ass. Imagine pulling that out of your, your consciousness on the brink of total annihilation and the death of all your loved ones. That's real inner strength. This is one of my favorite episodes of the season so far. This is just one episode in a masterpiece of a show, but it's the show's DNA expressed in an individual. What is truly good? What is truly evil? It's probably never going to be perfectly defined. Trying to get to absolute truth is an infinite asymptote approaching but never reaching, and yet it still has a shape and a direction, and we all feel it. There are a lot of things that offer a limited glimpse of it sort of through reflection, destruction weighed against creation, all for one versus one for all. I will take everything for my benefit versus I will give everything for someone else's benefit. Villains doing what's easy under the guise of difficulty, and heroes doing the difficult thing in the name of duty. Supporting terrible things for pragmatism and one's own self-interest. Fighting for what's right at great personal cost. We all know it. It's just difficult, which is sort of the point.